Westinghouse. Westinghouse Studio One. Westinghouse, the name that stands for leadership. First in atomic power to serve the nation. First in electrical power equipment to serve the needs of industry. First in the most truly helpful new appliances to make your dream home come true. Wherever electricity serves you, in whatever you do, for the new, the improved, the finest, in the widest range of products, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. First impressions? Young, anxious, attractive. And married. Yeah, and married. I knew that. <laughs> You're Feeney, aren't you? Yes, that's right. How are you, Senator Norton? Uh, Welcome to Washington. Thank you. Well, 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 you're a brave man. How so? Well, you start tackling your labors of office before your right-hand man has a chance to cushion you. <laughs> well, here you are. Start cushioning. Well, number one, I don't necessarily go with your appointments, you know. You can boot me and the rest of your staff out at your discretion. Uh, we'll settle that one right now. I want you here. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously a man with a vast need of cushioning. This is my <laughs> first federal job, you know, and it's a little different when you're not elected, just appointed by a governor. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Senator Hender set great store by you. I don't think I could do better. Well, I'll do the best I can for you. I was with Henders for 14 years, you know. Pity. How old was he? Not over 60, was he? 62, next month, if he lived. Well, Mr. Feeney, you may fire when ready. Well, number one, you've got your directory. This? Yeah, that'll serve as your Bible for the next couple of weeks. It'll tell you everything you have to know. I'll go over it later. Now, let's see, you're, uh, you're going to be sworn in tomorrow, aren't you? Yes, uh, so-and-so. Well, I'd advise a news conference. But after that, don't call anymore unless you have something important to announce. Oh, and you better study up on parliamentary rules. It's quite possible that even a first-year senator will be asked to preside. Mr. Feeney, you seem to know your way around. Senator, you got yourself a hot assistant. <laughs> well, uh, what about committee assignments? Oh, they'll be coming. What were uh, Hender's committee? Oh, they were big ones. Foreign relations, armed services, appropriations. But freshman senators usually get District of Columbia committee. Post office, civil service, you have to wait your turn for the big ones. Excuse me, Senator Norton, will you be calling a news conference today? Will I? For this afternoon. Set it up, will you, Betty? Meeting here. Right. I'm satisfied with what I see. Does that go both ways? Well, give me a couple of weeks and I'll tell you. You're frank. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Well, between you and my father, I should be reasonably well directed. Your father was quite a legend around here, wasn't he? Uh, how long was he in the Senate? Uh, 24 years? Sure. He had good years left. A lot of them. It's a pity. What's a pity? You don't know the story? Well, I've heard versions of it, yeah. The senior senator from my state. That would be Senator Rogers. That's exactly who it would be. He kept my father from being renominated. And this doesn't sit well on your father. Mr. Feeney, I came here with no enmities and with no preconceived ideas other than the basic ones I share with my party. But there is one exception. You share your father's dislike of Senator Rogers. 
That is a mild and tactful way of saying that here is a man who better keep his distance when I'm around. Well, that's, uh, that's going to be kind of difficult. Why? Well, he's senior senator from your state. Tradition calls on him to introduce you on the floor. He'll accompany you in tomorrow. He'll very likely make a call here. Let him. I'll be out. Don't Betty, I'll be out. Well, Senator, there are certain minimum things we observe. I'll observe the courtesies as long as it doesn't involve Senator Rogers. And when the press boys put the questions to you and his name comes up, what then? Do you just, uh, just read him off? I'll merely tell him that this is an area I don't choose to discuss. Senator. Senator, the areas that people don't choose to discuss around here very often are the backyard where they hang their laundry. Now, if I were you, Excuse I would... Excuse me. Senator Norton, Senator Rogers is out here. Shall I send him in? Now, just a minute, Betty. Excuse me, sir. Senator Rogers... I know who he is. Oh, all right, Feeney. Oh, Senator Rogers, I'll see him. Oh, Feeney. Yeah. This afternoon when the press is here, stay close to my elbow, will you? <laughs> sure. Well, Senator Rogers. Hello, Mr. Feeney. Nice to see you. Senator Norton, I'm Rogers. I don't think we've met. I don't believe we ever have. I see you have Jack Feeney in your office. That's fortunate. He's a good man. He seems to know his way around. Well, he should. There's a rumor he came here with Daniel Webster. Uh, may I sit down? I won't keep you long. I know you're probably busy. Uh, I presume they told you that I'm to introduce you on the floor tomorrow. That's what I've heard. Uh, I'll make it very brief. You'll find it's uh, more or less custom, that's all. And if you want anything or have any questions you want to ask, just check with me. I'll do what I can. I think I've been pretty well zeroed in by now. How's your father, Norton? He's getting old, Senator. Well, that's nature. He tires easily. Also nature. He misses working, Senator. He misses his career. With some men, that would be just a regret. With my father, it's a hunger. This is one we can't chalk up against nature. If the shoe fits. Your father and I had certain basic political disagreements. I fought against his nomination. But I'll tell you this, Norton, I have no intention of lumping you with your father, uh, as far as my attitude toward you is concerned. At present, uh, you're an unknown quantity to me. Maybe that we'll get along. Senator Rogers, I'll be comparably frank. I don't want your charitable little, charitable little tidbits. They may be aids to your conscience, but they're no good to me. <laughs> well, 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 well. We have a cause now, after all, haven't we? I will ask you this, though, my young friend, to hold off your attack until after I introduce you on the floor. It's been interesting meeting you, Senator Norton. Very interesting. Just Betty, come on. Betty, you know. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Well, you call a certain time and no one calls out. Hiya, boys. Okay, Betty. Hey, come on. What's the delay? Right, right, right. Sorry, now, the yeah. senator is eating his lunch. He's eating it on oh, our time. On, Mr. Yeah. Humphreys, may I suggest a protest through channels? Oh, come on, Jack. What's your impression of him? Is he like his old man? Now, look, boys. All I ask is a little patience. Oh, come on. Oh, Betty, count the ashtrays. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Count the ashtrays. This came from his father about an hour ago. Just after he went to lunch. Senator Frank Norton, huh? A weight thrower. An order giver. A banner waver. A trumpet blower and a threat shouter. You know, you put those all together, Betty, they spell daddy. <laughs> oh, We've got a deadline. Hey, uh, what about the afternoon? Are you, sir? Oh, thank you, Jack. Send them in, will you? Sure. All right, gentlemen. I'm afraid I'd have to give that question.
question a little more thought before I'd venture an opinion. Is that it, gentlemen? One more question, Senator Norton. You mentioned a few moments ago that your father had no plans for returning to politics. That's correct. As far as I know, none. Well, sir, there's a rumor going around that the governor appointed you at the uh, request of your father without consulting the senior senator. Now, wouldn't that mean that they feel no great love towards Senator Rogers? To the best of my knowledge, the governor appointed me because he thought I could do the job. I'd like to end this line of discussion with that statement, if I well, might. Well, you please. will admit, sir, that there's no love lost between you and Senator Rogers. No comment. Well, he ranks number four in your party, sir. You must admit he's a pretty able senator. I must admit nothing. And you don't think he's able? He may or may not be. I have no comment. Well, do you consider yourself uh, sufficiently open-minded on the subject of Senator Rogers to uh, support any bill he might be boosting? Well, that would depend upon the bill. One more thing, Senator Norton. Senator Rogers was quoted several months ago on his television program in answer to a question as to whom he thought were the worst senators of the past two decades. He, um, he put your father at the top of that list, if you recall now. That was a but stupid you... remark. Completely political in nature, as unfair as it was uncalled for. Would you care to comment for publication, or may we assume that your last quote sums up your feeling on the matter? You may simply state that my father served in the United States Senate for 24 years. He was elected and re-elected on four different occasions. I think that's a pretty good indication as to his caliber. Senator Rogers should check his mouth as well as his facts. Thank you very much, Thank Senator. You very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Feeney. They got my goat. Correction. They found one. Oh, anyway, I'm glad it's over, aren't you? Aren't I what? Glad it's over. It isn't over, Mr. Senator. It's hardly begun. Jim, your coffee's ready. When you finish with your father's telegram, come on out. I want to tell you about my day. I was at that Congressional Wives Luncheon. I happened to remark to the lady next to me that if there's one thing I really hated, it was baked potatoes. I found out later she was the wife of the senator from Idaho. Oh, well, you've got to give him credit. There are six bills on the floor of the Senate. He knows every one of them. He also knows how he expects you to vote on them. Well, he had some suggestions. They don't read like suggestions. They come out with the same inflection as if he just said, uh, son, go up and wash your face. Oh, come on now. Now, Senator, put your head back in that pillow and go on telling me about your day. What happened at the press conference? Well, they asked me a lot of questions, of course, about school, farm program, and foreign aid, things like that. And that's all? Hmm? Well, there were some questions about Senator Rogers and my father. I thought there would be. How did you handle it? Badly, I'm afraid. My Feeney thinks I did. Oh, I'll see what it is. I thought I'd turn the bench down there. Oh. Please do, come in. That's the paper, it was outside. Thank you. Jim, what did you say in the press conference when they asked you about Rogers? Yeah. Let me see that. That's an auspicious beginning if I've ever seen one. Well, please my old man, anyway. Is that who you're representing in the United States Senate? Hello. Yeah. Dad. Hi. Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, you heard about it on the radio. Well, I guess I kind of blew my top, huh? Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Dad. Oh, yes, Dad, I... Yeah. Yeah, I understand, Dad. Yeah.
Now that you've seen part one of the arena, let's turn to our Westinghouse program and Betty Burnett's. How to do the family wash. Yes, if you lived in some countries, here's how you might do the family wash. Yeah! First, you dip the clothes, and then you beat them and beat them to get the dirt out. Something is bound to give, and finally, it's the clothes. Well, it's not quite that bad when you wash your clothes in an old-fashioned washer with an agitator like this, but they do take quite a beating. You see those sharp blades? Well, let's watch those blades in action with a regular load of wash. You see how the clothes here in the center really get beaten back and forth, but the clothes here at the outside hardly move at all. Well, that's why Westinghouse developed a completely new way to wash. First of all, they took those sharp blades off the center post, formed them into smooth fins, and put them on the side of the washing basket. And then they got rid of the post altogether. Then the basket was tilted so that your clothes would turn over every time the basket revolved to get uniformly clean. And now, here it is, the new way to wash in action. Watch in slow motion how your clothes are flushed through sudsy water, lifted and turned 50 times a minute. This is complete agitation. All your clothes are washed all the time. And thanks to those smooth fins, your clothes never take a beating. Yes, the Westinghouse patented new way to wash gets your clothes so wonderfully clean and with far less wear. Now, don't forget you'll find that new way to wash only in a Westinghouse laundromat. So go and see this beautiful new deluxe laundromat at your dealers. And see its wonderfully efficient twin, the Westinghouse Clothes Dryer. And remember, they are the only completely automatic matched washer and dryer made today. And remember, too, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Turn you now to Westinghouse Studio One and the arena. If the senator is referring to the opinion written by Justice Haverstram in the J Hope Jackson case, then my good friend. Don't look so worried. He's been down there an hour and eight minutes. Not a scar on him yet. And I would put a further question. The distributors of whom we speak came in last year and obtained an exemption from federal control in a bill passed by the Congress. Now, is this not true? It most assuredly is. Do I see you nodding, Senator Norton? Speaking to me, Senator Rogers? Well, your name is Norton, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the last question concerning exemption from federal control passed by the Congress of the United States. My understanding, this is Bill H.R. 9632, passed by yay or nay vote. My colleague is extremely well versed. You will no doubt recall that the area covered by this particular bill had to do with certain principles espoused by my father, Senator Frank Norton, for a good number of years. Then if the junior senator retains his clarity of memory, he will further recall that his father's principles were somewhat uh, flexible in this regard. Senator Frank Norton attached uh, riders to that bill, granting special privileges to interests in his home state. These riders were nothing more than less than simple pork barrels. That is simply not true. The riders were legitimate extensions of the bills themselves. They were legitimate extensions to a handful of people in one county in Senator Norton's state. But to the country at large, they, have, they assume no such legitimacy. I must protest against what I consider to be an attack by the senior senator you of my state. You may protest all you please, but you will do me the goodness to observe the rudiments of parliamentary procedure by first requesting that I yield. All right, then. Will you yield? I shall be very happy to yield to a reasonable extent for a question. The senior senator mentioned two bills. The first was a simple bill, withdrawing from control of the National Forest Service. Mr. Mr. President, I rise to a point of order. I yielded only for a question. My learned young colleague is making an observation. If the senator will do me the good... The junior senator is out of order. 
I think the junior senator from my state can be excused from what is uh, mere enthusiasm rather than a deliberate disregard of procedures. Oh, these things take time. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to recall that he has more than a passing interest in an innate ability to, uh, for men to keep their mouths shut. <laughs> He was sworn in. Never in the history of the Senate have so few caused so much noise for so few. Our young man took the bit in his mouth and filled six and a half pages of the congressional record. Well, got back in a hurry. I was extremely anxious to get away from the scene of the crime. I figured. Uh, now, let me guess. You're right. Congratulations, son. You've shown honest guts and fight. Guts and fight. Your father admires those traits, doesn't he? He always has. Never give your opponent a chance to recoup for a counterattack. Hit him again and again and again. Keep him defending himself. Pretty good rule, don't you think? Well, it's a good rule for Stillman's gym. But I question his application on the floor of the United States Senate. Oh, you've got to admit I had due provocation. Well, now, isn't that funny? I would have guessed it was just the other way around. This man, this Rogers, rises on the floor of the United States Senate. It's a personal attack against my father. What am I supposed to do, Feeney? Sit there? If you're in a lock horns with a man like Senator Harvey Rogers, you ought to check your facts. By tacking on a couple of private pet charities, your father broke the back of both those bills. Um, I've got some dictating to do. Have Betty come in, will you? What's that? Message from Roger's office. He's going to be on a television show tonight. The press looks at Washington, 8.30. Says he has a few things to say which might interest you. Oh, I'll bet. Have Betty watch this as she can and make stenographic notes of everything he says. Have her type them up first thing in the morning and have them on my desk. Oh, Feeney. I know you're here to help me. But there are going to be times when I'm going to have to look you straight in the eye and order you to back off. Not suggest, order. This is one of them. This is my fight. What is this fight with you? Are you a United States Senator or the heavyweight in purple trunks? Now, I've read a lot of stuff you've written. And every bit I've read told me that here was a guy who knew what government was. You've been here just 24 hours and you act like a puppet. With strings which extend all the way back to Daddy. Back off, Feeney. I mean that. Yes, sir. In this area, sir, that you conflicted so with uh, ex-Senator Frank Norton? Norton, for one, and others. I always felt that theirs was a brand of politics that went back to the old days, when you traded a turkey for a vote instead of a promise to govern and govern well. It was the difference in the sense of values. Yes, sir. Now, what about his son? Well, as to uh, Senator James Norton, I'm sure his motives are of the highest. But thus far, he has shown himself to be a man like his father, who will fight for an issue because he likes to fight, not because he likes the issue. If I do him an injustice, I'm sorry, but these, this is my impression. Thank you, Senator. Now, one other question. Jim. Now, now, Margaret. Hello? Yes, this is he. What newspaper? Yes, I saw the program. I have no comment. Jim. He's made a career out of hounding my father. Now it's passing over to me. He knows we're two of a kind. And he knows more than I do. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Nothing at all. Hello. Yes? That's right, I have no comment. Oh, operator, would you see to it there's no further calls put through here this evening? Unless they're from members of my staff. 
That's right. Thank you. Margaret, you're like Feeney. You seem to think I, could, I should dodge an issue just That's just the point, Jim. It isn't an issue. It isn't a bill or a law or a philosophy, the kind of thing you're here for. All you're doing and all you've done since you've been here is defend your father. Well, Jim, has it ever occurred to you that... You dislike him, don't you? I don't dislike your father, Jim. You dislike him because he seems a little loud, a little arrogant. But you don't know him, Margaret. And you do, I suppose. Most of your life you spent in school, Jim. Well, he was in the Senate. I know this is a man with a concern for the people. A concern for the people. That, Senator, is not a unanimous feeling. Nothing in politics is unanimous, my dear. But if you're going to be so small that, that, that all you can see is his arrogance... I've and never disliked him for his arrogance. And I've certainly never resented the fact that he's a man full of regrets. I pity him for this, Jim. I, I pity him because he has to brood the rest of his life. But what I do resent, the thing that I resent the most, is that your father has tried to mold you into his image. It's nonsense, Margaret, and you know it. All he's tried to do is to, is to show me who my enemies would be. And your friends. Has it ever remotely occurred to him that you have friends? My father's always said, when it comes oh, to politics... Don't quote him anymore to me, will you, Jim? I'm, I'm fed up with his quotes, with his sayings, and his little homilies, and his hatred. And I have a big regret, too, Jim Norton. A very big regret. And simply that I wish you were fed up, too. young colleagues stood there extolling the virtues of the Kelly Folsom bill and in three minutes turned around and denied the very essence of the bill itself. That is simply not the case at all. Does the senator favor federal controls in this area or does he not? We have an abiding interest in anything that he wants to say, but too often in the past few weeks I have found him quite incapable of consistency. I want to make this clearly understood. I did I not feel. yield. Well, then, will you yield now? I will not, because I will not allow this uh, debate to go into areas that are totally irrelevant. Is the senator trying to impose a one-man cloture here? Mr. President, will the senior senator yield a privileged motion? I yield. Pursuant to the previous order, I now move that the Senate stand in recess until 12 o'clock noon tomorrow. Mr. President. Senator from Alaska. <laughs> I, I thought I recognized you. Are you here to repeal the 18th Amendment? Exactly, sir. I am Jack Feeney by name. I'm a senator builder. Now, you take my latest protege. He was a passable lawyer. He should make a good senator, but he ain't. You want to know why? He's got a father complex. He's frightened. He's bitten into a rotten apple and he'll die before he spits out the worm. So here I am getting drunk. Saying to myself, Feeney, Feeney, why don't you help this young man? Why don't you show him all the ropes? Why don't you show him a rope he can hang his opponent with? Feeney? Feeney, you could get Rogers off his back by just saying the right words. But you're not going to say them. Good night, madam! Don't take any wooden congressman. <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody gave you the wrong dope. Senators don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> hey, you look tired. You also look scared. I am. Both. I made a fool of myself on the floor today. He outmaneuvered me, Feeney. Made me keep harping on the one point he knew I couldn't prove. Why am I so stupid? Oh, you're not stupid. You're just young. And I'm just drunk. Oh. Here's some coffee, Jack. You know, the thing that sticks in my craw is that here you are having to take all this guff when all you really have to do is get up on the floor and say, look who's talking. What do you mean? Just dig back a couple of years and come up with a nice little plum and you say, look at this man, fellow senators. Look what I've got here. I've got a little information about this outstanding, upright senior senator for my state. It says that the right honorable Mr. Harvey Rogers was formerly a member in good standing of an organization known as the Vindicators. Now defunct. And now also on the Attorney General's subversive list. The Right Honorable Mr. Harvey Rogers was once a member of an outfit that hated everybody who didn't come over on the Mayflower. And that includes a lot of names, a lot of people. A lot of colors and a lot of ideas. So, the next time Mr. Rogers gets up to take a swipe at me, just remember to consider the source. That's all, my friends. Just consider the source. Hello, get me Senator the Norton suite, quickly, please. Hello, Mrs. Norton. This is Jack Feeney in your husband's office. Uh, look, Mrs. Norton, when your husband gets home, tell him to forget it, will you? Yeah. Yeah, he, he'll know all about it. Just tell him to forget it. Tell him I was drunk and I didn't know what I was saying. Now, please, Mrs. Norton, tell him to forget it. a moment and turn to our Westinghouse program and Betty Furness. Can she last this round? Yes, she's been going round and round that full skirt trying to iron it smooth. It, it's just got to be right for the party. Now look, it's too dry and she's going to have to dampen it again. Oh, it's such a bother. It's so much easier ironing with a steam iron. See how fast it goes? It just seems to sail right over the cloth and it leaves everything so smooth. But uh, don't think for a minute that every steam iron works as well as that one. You see, some steam irons have just a couple of vents at the tip of the sole plate like this. Now, others have a few more. But the Westinghouse has 15 vents that go way down the sole plate like that. And so, well, here is the width of the steam pass from that first iron. <laughs> it's not very wide, is it? And there's the second. It's a little bit wider. But look. The Westinghouse iron gives you more steam over a wider area. And that means faster, easier ironing and pressing and better dampening, too. In fact, you save strokes on every piece you iron. Now, I'm going to prove that to you by holding this Westinghouse iron over this aluminum cookie sheet so you can watch the steam come out. Just watch. 
There. You see that wide, smooth path of steam? Now, that's why you get faster, easier ironing and better dampening. It's wonderful for the new Miracle fabrics. And this can be a dry iron, too, you know. All you do is just turn the dial to dry. And wait till you hear this. This new Westinghouse steam and dry iron is now yours at a new low, low price of only $14.95. So go and get your Westinghouse steam iron and turn out those summer cottons as smooth as silk. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Turn you now to Westinghouse Studio One and the arena. I've been waiting for you all morning. Have you? Where are you going? The airport. Why? Meet my father. He's flying in. I phoned your hotel all last night until two this morning. Did you? Now look, Senator, this won't take long, but I need your attention. I need it very badly at the moment. Go ahead, you've got it. Well, I was drunk last night. Don't apologize. I'm not apologizing for being drunk, but I am sorry for acting like a drunk. And saying things I had no right to say. For giving you information that will destroy an old man. Feeney, you make it sound like the third act of a bad melodrama. Now, look, you can't do this. Now, listen to me, Feeney. Listen to me for a minute. Have you any idea what it's like to sit in that Senate day after day after day and get whipped, get beaten down, get out-talked, intimidated, made to look like a fool? Do you know what that feels like? I guess I do. All right, then. Suddenly, I'm handed a weapon, something you use on my tormentor. Now, look, if you're going to start using names, you better check the facts. Senator Rogers is no tormentor. He's got a temper like yours. There are times when he isn't very selective in his language. But he doesn't make you bleed because he happens to like the color of your blood. Why does he do it then? Because I think he figures you're a lousy senator. Like my father. Exactly. All right. We'll see how good the senior senator is. Now look, then. that information never should have left my mouth. Somebody tried to sell it to me once. And when the seller got as drunk as I was, they spilled it for nothing. And it's been up here for a long, long time. And it's never come out. Why did it come out last night? Because I was drunk. Because I was sorry for you. Oh, that's right, Senator. I, I felt sorry for you. And way down inside my drunken soul, I dug deep. And I came up with what seemed like a nugget. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Norton. You can listen to this, too. I was just telling your husband that... No, that's not right. That's not what I'm doing. I'm asking him. I'm pleading with him to forget what I told him. Look, Jack, I've got to meet an airport. No, you've got time. You've got time to listen to how to save a man's reputation. And don't use that nugget I gave you, Mr. Senator. Because it isn't a nugget at all. It's just a piece of mud. But it's the truth. I know it is. I know it's the truth. I spent a lot of hours last night in a lot of devious channels. But I confirmed it. Every devious channel I know in this town leads up on a sewer. Listen to him, Jim. He's talking sense to you. I'm giving you more than sense, Senator. I'm giving you a basic truth. There's a line of decency, of ethics. You don't cross over in this town or in that Senate. Once you cross over that line carrying a big, dirty stick, then every name you call, all the rotten things you do, you can sew them together and wear it as a coat. Because it'll fit you. Margaret, no. Go down the lobby. I've got two minutes. Is there anything to say to Mr. Feeney? Do it quickly. If you want to excuse me or justify me or cut me to ribbons, do it quickly, will you? There are moments in a man's life when he should be able to just lie down and die. Quietly, unobtrusively, and simply. Just die. I'll do what I can, Mr. Feeney. What will you do? Well, I, I lead a very orderly life, Mrs. Norton. I plan it in segments. Number one, I type out my resignation. 
Number two, I go to see Senator Norton. And number three, I get drunk. He's waiting for you, Mrs. Norton. Is that you, Mr. Feeney? Yes, sir. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, go on, Mr. Feeney. Tell me the worst. I take it that most of what you have to tell me is the worst. Senator Norton has some information about you. Something you did a long, long time ago. Go on. Well, it's the kind of information that wants out. Well, it could be very serious for you. You mean destructive and irrevocable. That's exactly what I mean. And now it's for me to plumb the depths of my memory and see if I can figure out what, what is this nefarious action of mine that is suddenly to be brought into the light. As a matter of fact, I don't need to plumb very deep. All these years, I've thought it hidden knowing that it was just around the corner, ready to show its miserable, ugly face. The Vindicators, that's what you mean, isn't it? That's what I mean. I joined it during the, during the Depression, when a man was too frightened to do much thinking. This was an outlet, an excuse, a, a convenient way of finding a scapegoat. One of the tragedies of our time, Mr. Feeney, there are so many scapegoats available. It didn't seem too important at the time. Most of us didn't have the foresight to know that what was stupid 25 years ago could be dangerous two and a half decades later. But you came here tonight, even so. Well, I happen to think you've made up for this one many, many times. It was decent of you, Mr. Feeney. Wonderfully, incredibly decent of you. Tell me, where did Senator Norton get this information? Well, he got it. He got it from me. You're an unhappy man, Mr. Feeney. People in the middle generally are. Two separate and distinct loyalties, each pulling at you from different directions. And which way do you go? Thank you for coming, Mr. Feeney. Let me get this straight. You bring me all the way here, a thousand miles, to ask me what is patently a stupid question. Shall you use the information? That's right. And yet you point blank refuse to tell me what the information is. I do, Dad. I must. Well, I find your reticence difficult to understand. I helped you get this appointment. You recall? I recall the governor appointed me. He respected your talent. I won't deny that. But I'm not a lightweight when it comes to influence, Jim. You want the answer to a question. There's only one answer. In politics, a man has to use every single possible weapon in his possession. 
If he doesn't, he's a bloody fool. In politics, you have to fight, you have to brawl, you have to claw, you, 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 you have to hit low. Always felt that way? Why not? Politics is only a form of dirt farming, where you raise careers out of muck. A man can spend 24 years serving in the Senate, and this man can be a giant. But politics dictates that even a giant can be thrown aside by a mob of midgets. Who might they be? The soulless, brainless, dull, oxen-like mob. You give them a full gut and all you ask in return is an X on the ballot. And they turn on you like a hound dog and kill you with the very thing you handed to them. You worry about morals in politics, my son. Look for it in the residue of my political life. What have I got? An empty, meaningless life. An old age full of memories. A career that just stopped and didn't end. A purpose, a meaning, a hope, all stamped into the ground by this man you have such compunctions about hurting. Take this information, whatever it is. Use it like a bomb on Monday morning. Explode it in Roger's face. Rip him apart with him, make him crawl out of that chamber. I'll think about it. If you think about it, you'll eventually thank me for some good advice. I think I've taught you something, son. I think you have, Dad. Yes. I think you have. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Wish me luck. He says McClinic's name will be brought up for confirmation next week. Now, the way he says... George, we I'm making an announcement on the floor this morning. About what? About a wire that I'm sending to my governor, announcing my intention to resign. Well, I... Fire me. consent that following quorum call we may uh, have the customary morning hour transaction of routine affairs with the usual limitation on speeches in two minutes. Without objection it is so ordered. Mr. President. The chair recognizes Senator Rogers. making an announcement to this body. I have here... The senior senator from my state, yield for a question. I yield. Senator Rogers, my question is a carryover from our debate here on Friday. At that time, you objected to the nature of some of the remarks in that debate. You suggested quite pointedly that we should refrain from personality. Now, my question is, what if there are certain aspects of a man's personality that have a bearing on his qualifications to debate an issue? Are you suggesting that these facts not be introduced into the debate? If these facts are pertinent, I would not question their admissibility. When I tell you, here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Would the senator think back to his remarks about my father? In retrospect, does he now feel them to be pertinent? Or would he, at this time, and for the record, consider withdrawing some of those remarks? Now I've heard everything. It's blackmail. Yeah. What my learned young colleague does not seem to realize is 
that at no time have I, I ever attempted to injure a fellow senator or a fellow human being for the sake of rendering injury. If I have been critical of an individual or outspoken, the criticism was leveled at their beliefs and their actions. I have attacked no one as a person. I have attacked many as bad senators and ineffectual legislators. And as far as this goes, Senator, those remarks hold. Then, Senator, I will now ask you to yield. I yield. Senator, excuse me for taking his time. I find I have nothing further to add. I withdraw my request to the floor. Am, uh, am I permitted to ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Why didn't you use it? I don't know. I really can't say. You know, Feeney, when I sat down, I, I looked around the room and this chamber. For the first time, I, I really felt like I belonged here. You do belong here. But to some men, this isn't a pilot plant of a democracy down here. This is an arena. They walk into it to destroy one another. And they wave one banner and use one excuse. And they call it politics. They have one stock defense for every unprincipled act they perform. For every human being they try to destroy, and sometimes ultimately do destroy. And again, it's politics. Politics isn't the dirty thing, Mr. Senator. The dirt comes from the men. Jack, I had some typewritten papers in the chamber here. I tore them up and put them in the wastebasket in my office. Would you be sure they're destroyed first thing in the morning? It'll be a pleasure. Uh, your wife's waiting for you, Senator. Thanks. See you tomorrow, Mr. Senator. See you tomorrow, Mr. Feeney. Now, are you quite proud? No. Not proud, Father. Not that. You have that much awareness anyway. Being able to cringe effectively is not a talent. Whatever it is, Father, I I came by it myself. I'm sorry, Father, but some of your ideas I can't live with. I regret having to tell you that. More than I can say. I'll add that speech to the rest of the residue. It hurts, doesn't it? What are you going to do now? I don't know. Why don't you go see Senator Rogers? Well, there are some things I'd like to talk to him about. Appointments and bills and budget. Will you come with me? I'd love to.
Just look at him running his toy auto across the top of that lovely fixed reed cocktail table. You'd think he was all set for a spanking until you looked at his mother's face and realized that she's not worried at all. Because the top of that table is made of Westinghouse micarta, the miracle beauty covering that's so tough that almost nothing can mar its lovely surface. You know, these days, people are using micarta in every room in the house, even for the top of high-style chests like this one by the Mango Company. Now, micarta is not only practical, but it comes in such handsome patterns and subtle, pleasing colors. For instance, here's a sparkling design that comes in a lovely range of colors. It's called Stardust. And then here's a favorite pattern of mine. This one is called Mardi Gras. It's so gay and festive. It adds brightness to any room. So look for Westinghouse micarta, spelled M-I-C-A-R-T-A when you're building or redecorating. And look for it on furniture tops. You'll love it. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. You got that? Sign my name, and then maybe better write in caps underneath commissioner. You know what I mean? I've got it, sir. Get that off today. Oh, and uh, get the Adoption Bureau for me. And get out file on, uh, let's see, file number 4356. Got that? 4356? Something wrong, sir? Plenty. Get it fast. Get everything you can regarding file number 4356. Next week, a new television play starring Priscilla Gillette, Douglas Watson, Lynn McCarthy, and Dolly Haas. Here's a beautiful gift, the new Westinghouse Grill and Waffler. It toasts, fries, grills, and bakes. For instance, look, 12 juicy hamburgers all cooked at once. Or use these grids for the tastiest waffles ever. Only $29.95 at your Westinghouse dealers. Westinghouse Studio One has been selected for viewing by America's armed forces at home and overseas. This is Paul Brinson saying good night until next week. Paul Westinghouse.